Cameron Mitchell and Gail Storm. From Hollywood, the Mutual Network, in cooperation with Family Theater, presents Counterplot, starring Cameron Mitchell. And now, here is your hostess, Gail Storm. Family Theater's only purpose is to bring to everyone's attention a practice that must become an important part of our lives if we are to win peace for ourselves, peace for our families, and peace for the world. Family Theater urges you to pray. Pray together as a family. And now to our transcribed drama, Counterplot, starring Cameron Mitchell as Emil. There were three of us who took part, and for what we did, we had our reasons. It was 9.30 that night when we met at a table outside the little cafe on Wernerstrasse. I had known Pavlik since I was a boy, and when Marie and I fled our homeland two years ago, it had been Pavlik who helped. Pavlik who stole the passports and forged the visas. Without him, I wouldn't be alive today. But I did not know the other man, and there was something about him, something about his cold hand when I reached out to shake it, that I did not like. Emil, this is Alex. Hello. A uh, pleasure. I consider it a pleasure. I've told him most of it. Well, let's sit down. My feet are killing me. By all means. I want to say I consider it a privilege to have been chosen to participate. You haven't been chosen yet. But public told me. I... Why do you ask money for this? Because I must live. When a man fights for his country as a soldier, don't you pay him? I would gladly die for this cause, but I must eat and have a place to sleep and... Alex, uh... Alex, don't make a speech. You'll be paid. Fifty thousand in Swiss. When the job is finished. But what if something goes wrong? <laughs> then you won't need the money. Nothing will go wrong. It has all been carefully planned. Once we're inside the embassy, there will be nothing to do but wait. And if the local police should interfere... A foreign embassy is foreign soil. They have no jurisdiction. Suppose they are asked to help. Rutsora would not take that upon himself. Rutsora? The charge d'affaires. Ah, oh, then he is the one who can release your wife. He is the one. Shall we go? It was eight minutes to ten when Pavlik turned his car into the little alley across the street from the embassy. We sat there in the shadows while I unpacked the machine pistols from the suitcase. Do you... do you think we will need to use these? We're hoping not. So should Rotsar. Emir, I have three minutes. Yes. Is the light still on in the vestibule? Yes. When it goes off, we start. But slowly, slowly... The man must be given time to leave the embassy and go through the gate. Are you sure he is trustworthy? As sure as we are of you, Alex. And he did not ask for money. A lot he will need money when the American magazines have bought his story, How I Escaped from the Slave Masters, or something. Emil, there it goes. The light? Yes. Let's go. Will he leave the gate open? That's just what he'll do. Through the gate. There. Ah. Yeah. I'll let him start up the street. What does he do in the embassy? Code clerk. Oh, it will be three installments with pictures. All right, now. The gate's open. You see, Alex? He was trustworthy. There is still the front door. So there is. Unlocked. Extremely trustworthy. We stepped into the darkened vestibule of the embassy and closed the door behind us. 
It was a three-story building with Rutsara's room on the top floor, which was the reason there had to be three men. Alex guarding the front entrance and vestibule that opened onto the connecting corridor to the staff offices and the back door below stairs. Pavlik stationed on the second floor landing overlooking the main staircase and the street. And finally, the man who would climb to the third floor and let himself into the room where Rotsora was sleeping. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Who is it? Get out of bed and keep your hands up. Yes, but who? Do as I say. Who are you? Maria Petloff is my wife. You... You must not think I was responsible for that. It would be senseless for you to shoot me. I am not here to shoot you, Herr Rutsora. Where's the light switch? There is a lamp on my bed table. Don't move. How did you get in there? Never mind that. I happen to know that my wife is still being held in the city, and I know where. Then you know it is not here. No matter. Plus, Rich, you must be aware of the statement she made at the press conference yesterday. The statement she was forced to make. Have it your own way. Publicly, she has renounced. And by tomorrow, just as publicly, one of your own attaches will assert to the Western press that you coerced my wife into making that statement. You, you're bluffing. You will see if I am. Rich attaché, Rikos. You don't even know who to mistrust. Not Sandef. He left the building 15 minutes ago. Oh, it's impossible. No more impossible than what you made my wife say against me. But he was... With uh... his secret police? They're the ones you have to watch most closely, Herr Rotsora. Now, pick up that phone. But, uh... Pick it up, and you say what I tell you to. Pavlik! The side window! What is that? Stay where you are. It's the police. You've been found Close out. Close your mouth and stand still. Emil. What was it? A man. He broke from one of the windows on the ground floor, ran for the gate. Did you get him? No, he got away. Rikos. Who? The other attaché. Now the police will really be down on you. Who else is in this building here, Rukzok? No one. Who else? The truth. Only my... my wife and infant son, I swear it. Where? In the next room. It will go badly for them if you are lying. I am not. What about the servants? Next door in the Chancellor. Pavlik, go get his wife and the child. My friend, I think our plan has miscarried. I will not leave without Maria. But she is not here. Then you will have her brought here, Herr Rosora. Free, unharmed. Now get on that phone and say what I tell you to. While Rutsora called the other legation across the city where Maria had been transferred in protective custody, Pavlik went into the adjoining bedroom, returned a few moments later with a small, thin-faced woman who carried a sleeping infant in her arms. Her face was white with fear, and her fingers trembled. This must have been how Maria looked that morning a week ago, when two members of Rosora's secret police posing as friends of mine came to our apartment and told her I'd been injured in an automobile accident and she must come right away. I thought of that. Then I stopped feeling sorry for any trembling woman or sleeping child of Maxim Rosoras. Yes, yes, that's right, here at the embassy. Yes, it's just a moment. Uh, do you wish to add anything personally, uh, Herr Petlov? Maxim... What is the matter? In a minute, in a minute. They understand that my wife must be delivered here within half an hour. Perfectly. Then I have nothing to add. Very well. Uh, hello? Yes, that seems to be all. Yes, yes, goodbye. Maxim, what is happening? It will be all right. But these men with guns. It will be all right, I tell you. We will be here only a little while, Madame Rutsara. After that... Both our families can be peacefully reunited. Pavlik! Who's that? I told you to guard the front door. There are police cars pulling up and trucks with floodlights. Get downstairs and stay there. Yes, I think we'd better all go downstairs, Pavlik. May I put the baby in his crib? No. I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, my friend, this is not going well. Not well at all. It will go better. You will see. <laughs> As we descended the stairs to the first floor, I could see through the hallway windows that the police had indeed arrived. Outside on the street directly in front of the embassy, three official cars were drawn up, 
and the local gendarmerie was already busy holding back the crowd that had begun to gather. Look, they're bringing up a truck with loudspeakers. Perhaps they intend to use sweet reason upon us. Where does this door lead? To my library. All right, step inside. Alex, you stay here in the hallway. Cover the front door. We'll leave this one open public. If you're thinking about the service entrance, it's in the front, too, down there at the side. Then cover it here from the library window. Oh, there go the floodlights. What about the iron fence on the side? We'll have to risk that. Small risk. These grounds are flanked by two other embassies. Western embassies, though, eh, Herr I don't see what that has to do with it. Hello. Hello there. Can you hear me? Well, they've got the loudspeaker going. Push open the window. Get back from it. Can you hear me in there? We saw the window pushed open. This is the chief of police, if you can hear me. And if Monsieur Rousseau is able to speak with us, have him appear in the window, please. Pavlik, what do you think they're up to? I don't know, but I don't Perhaps think I like... Perhaps it would be good to show them he's on no, Sendef must have reported by now what we're doing here. He must uh, have. Regardless, the police cannot let personal sympathies interfere with their duty, mm-hmm. and in this matter, we are the criminals. Yeah, but what about Rosora's men who kidnapped my wife? Yes, yes, but, but prove it. They will give you 60 seconds to bring Monsieur Rosor to the window. 60 seconds. If you have not done so by then, we will assume he has been murdered and stormed the embassy. You, you've got to let me speak to them. They, they can't break in here. What? I won't permit it. Of course, I had forgotten. What do you mean? Let him go to the window, Emir. He has more reason to keep nosy policemen out of here than we. Yes, because of his files. And stolen dossiers and espionage records. Perhaps even evidence of Maria's kidnapping. Exactly. Let him go to the window. I warn you, any attempt to pillage this place to tamper with the fish will... Get up to the window! I warn you! Don't threaten me, you pig! Get up there! Maxim, do as he says, please! You have ten seconds left. If by then you have not produced Monsieur Rosora... Wait! Wait! I am not sorry. I... I am safe. I have not been harmed. I forbid you to enter these grounds. It will not be necessary. I forbid you. Do you understand? Monsieur Rosor, we are bound to respect your diplomatic privilege with regard to the embassy. But I appeal to you, a civil offense has been committed. You are being forcibly held against your will. Maxim, let them come in. Keep out of this. No. It it will all be settled. I have made arrangements. It is purely a political matter. Uh, Just a moment, please. Just a moment. What's happening? There's another car pulling up in front. It's from the legation, Pedro. Stay in the window. Let me see. They are delivering your wife, as I promised. Can you see who's getting out, Patrick? The driver. (laughs) Two men in the back seat. Yes. And a woman. Oh, it's Maria. I recognize the code. Don't get too close to the window. Monsieur Rosara. Monsieur Rosara. Answer him. Yes. What is it? There are four people here who claim to have your permission to enter the embassy. One of them is a Monsieur Casalau. Yes, yes, that is correct. They have my permission. Let them pass. Uh, well. There's something about this I don't like. Wait. What do you mean? Why must there be three men with her? They are for my protection here, Pavli. I don't like it either. Send them back. Alex, cover the front door. All right. You want your wife safely returned? Yes. I want assurance I will not be shut down for my pains. They're coming up the walk. If they go back, they'll take your wife with them, Herr Petloff. And I do not think you would like that. Pavli, they've got guns! <laughs> it was a trap, I thought so. Don't shoot, don't shoot! Maybe you keep your head down. Don't shoot! You hit Maria! That's not your wife! It's a man in a woman's coat! Well, I got one! The others have the right to the side! I see them, headed for the service way! Ah, they're gone. Through the entrance. Gone. The one on the walk is crawling towards the gate! Emil? I could finish him from here! No, 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 let... let him go. (sighs) Erutsora. I... I was unable to stop them. They have orders to use force when necessary. Very well. And now they have used it. And it has failed. And I want my wife brought here. I... I cannot promise. You see this pistol? And you see your wife? Your child? You, You wouldn't. I swear it. Both of them. Before your eyes. 
Now you call those pigs you take orders from. You tell them I want my wife. <laughs> But Sora got on the phone again, and this time there was no nonsense. He told them exactly what had to be done, and why, and what would surely happen if it were not. And all the while, I stood there, my machine pistol pointed at his wife and child, and hate growing in my heart. I had told him his family had 30 minutes, 30 minutes to live. If Maria was not delivered to the embassy within that time, he hung up. Five minutes went by, and the street outside was quiet. Are you sure they understood? Uh, they, they understood. Is there any doubt they will do as you told them? I think not. Emil. What? There's a car pulling up in front. Oh, can you see who it is? Stay back from the window. The man is getting out. It is another car from the legation. Only one man? That's all I see. He's walking over to the truck with the loudspeaker. Well, is there anyone else in the car? I can't tell. There might be in the back seat. Oh, sorrow, you would not be such a fool. Him, him. I told them you heard me. Monsieur Petlove, Monsieur Petlove, will you come to the window, please? What did you tell that man at the embassy? Only what you heard. I would not jeopardize my wife and child. You must believe him. Monsieur Bedlam, this is the chief of police. The only ones here carrying arms are my own men. I give you my word of honor you will not be fired upon or in any way molested. Will you come to the window, please? Oh, perfect. What shall I do? Get up next to the window and answer him, but keep under cover. Yes. Monsieur Bedlam? Yes! This is Petlov. What do you want? I cannot see you. This is Petlov. You'll have to take my word. I would like permission to enter the embassy. I will come alone and unarmed. I must speak to you. No, no, no. I won't permit. Be quiet. I give you my word, Monsieur Petlov. I will be unarmed. You may search me if you wish. I ask only for five minutes to speak with you. Emil. What harm can it do? Perhaps the man from the legation has asked him to act as intermediate. To arrange for releasing your wife. What can you lose? All right. All right. Monsieur! Yes? You may come in alone for five minutes. <laughs> While Pavlik held his pistol on Maxim Rosara and his family, I went into the vestibule with Alex to watch the chief of police come through the gate and up the wide walk toward the front door of the embassy. In the glare of the floodlights, I could see that he was a plump, red-cheeked man who looked as if he had not risen from behind his desk for years. But he came without hesitation, his arms swinging lightly at his sides, his step jaunty, confident. And just as he reached the door, Alex swung it open and stepped back. Both our guns were trained on that opening. Monsieur Petlov? Step inside. Close the door behind you. Search him, Alex. Nothing. What is it you wish to say to me? Is there somewhere we can sit down? Those chairs at the end of the vestibule? No, they will do nicely. Watch the door, Alex. If anyone moves through the gate, shoot. Very well. Yeah, this is better. You asked for five minutes. Nearly two of them are gone. Very well. You saw the car that pulled up a moment ago? Yes. Then I need not tell you it was from a legation whose government is favorable to the regime now in power in your own country. They are all butchers. They are all the same. One country is like the other. Be that that is it may, my government small though it may seem to you, has an obligation to protect the lives and property of all accredited foreign nationals on its soil. Oh, yes, then why did you not protect my wife when she was kidnapped by Rutsora's men? Why? But you both enter this country illegally. We could take no Your steps. Your excuses, I knew it would L be Let excuses. me finish, please let me finish. Yet, yet, despite your illegal entry, we would have been prepared to let slip your wounding of the man who attacked the embassy just a while ago, even if he had died as manslaughter. Did, did he die? 
No, 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 he will recover. But even if he had, we would have attempted to keep the charge at a minimum. However, there will be no such chance if you carry out this latest threat you have made against Rutsora's family. Is that what the man from the legation came to tell you? It was. And my wife, my wife is not with him? She is not. I have sworn to carry it out. It is an oath to the devil. I have sworn it. It will be a sin. Yes! Yes, it will be a sin! It will be a sin. And I will be sorry. But if Maria is not returned by the time I said, Rutsora's wife and child will die. A priest could release you from that oath. No! It's a phone in the library. Chief, could that be one of your men? No, no, there would be no reason. Hello? Hello? Yes, just a minute. Who, who is it, Pavlik? It's the other legation for Herr Rutsora. Let me talk to them. Is it all right, Emil? Yes, let him talk to them. Here. Hello? Yes. Yes, and... But you must understand, it is the lives of my family that are at stake. I know that we cannot permit ourselves to be intimidated, but... But my wife and child will be murdered if we don't release her. I am your superior. I order it. I will answer to the minister. You must release her. I promise you, if that woman is not released and brought here to the embassy within 15 minutes, I will expose it all. The documents are here. Yes, yes, I believe in a regime. But I will not see my family sacrificed to make 15 lines in the American press. I take the responsibility. Really, sir, immediately. Well? She will be here. Have no doubt of it. We waited five minutes, ten minutes, and Maxim Rutsora watched me. Oh, there was no question in his mind that I would keep my promise. The chief of police had left the embassy and gone out in front again to wait for the car that Rutsora had promised would come. And the time and the lives of Rutsora's wife and child ticked away. There is a car coming up. Let me see. It is your wife. It must be. Monsieur Rutsora. Monsieur Rutsora. Come to the window, please. Let me talk to them. Go ahead. Yes, it is I, Rutsora. The car that has just arrived is carrying Madame Petlov. You are asked to come to the window and identify her. Why should I identify her? You do as he says. I am watching. Go to the window. All right, but I don't understand. Do as he says. I will tell you if it is she. Very well. Can you see the woman? Yes. Yes, it is she. Oh, there's no mistake. It's Maria. Do you recognize her? Yes, I do. You are asked to come down the walk, Monsieur Rousseau. We will send Madame Petlov up, as you do. Your friends from the legation would like to speak with you. Maxim. It is all right. We mustn't worry, Anna. But why must you go down there? It is merely a technicality. I'll be back. Is this agreeable to you, Monsieur Rousseau? Yes. Yes, it is quite agreeable. Send up the woman. <laughs> I watched him go down the walk toward the gate as Maria approached, smiling and free, free at last. She passed him and ran up to the door of the embassy with her arms outstretched, her eyes wet with tears. And even as I, as I took her in my arms, I could not help watching Rotsora, his head bowed as he went through the gate and stepped into the limousine that was waiting. It drove off, and Pavlik and Alex walked with us down to the gate that led to freedom. And then, then at the last moment, I remembered something and turned. 
And there, standing on the veranda, was Madame Gutsora, alone, her infant in her arms, looking past us at the disappearing taillights of the car that was taking her husband away. And I could tell she knew that from now on, she would always be alone. It has surely occurred to you that one of the supreme benefits which radio has brought to all of us has been a greater realization of the relation between the prevention and the cure of the more disastrous diseases which can afflict the body. I know that some serious and honest people are often inclined to believe that all the storm warnings about these diseases may possibly make some people jittery and overfearful. The talk of dangers simply multiply the number of fears a person has to deal with. But all in all, most of us know that the great source of fear is the unknown, not the known, and that the more we know of the nature and strategy and tactics of an enemy or a disease, the less morbid our fears become. Out of knowledge comes remedies and prevention strategy. It is the same with the diseases and maladies that can afflict the modern family. Family well-being, like personal, physical health, is maintained in the very first place by forestalling what is dangerous to its unity and peace and its harmonious growth. Family theater, therefore, uses the wonderful medium of radio to emphasize the place of prayer in the family. Family prayer is the first and most important bulwark against all the personal and social forces which are enemies of the family because it relates the family to God. And what ultimate power has any human set of forces against God's power? That's why we say with confidence that the family that prays together stays together. From Hollywood, Family Theater has brought you transcribed Counterplot, starring Cameron Mitchell. Gail Storm was your hostess. Others in our cast were Edgar Berrier, Fritz Feld, Theodore Von Ells, Gladys Holland, and Lou Krugman. The script was written and directed for Family Theater by John T. Kelly, with music composed by Harry Zimmerman and conducted by George Weil. This series of Family Theater broadcasts is made possible by the thousands of you who feel the need for this type of program by the Mutual Network, which has responded to this need, and by the hundreds of stars of stage, screen, and radio who give so unselfishly of their time and talent to appear on our family theater stage. To them and to you, our humble thanks. This is Tony Lofrano expressing the wish of family theater that the blessing of God may be upon you and your home and inviting you to be with us next week when family theater will present The One Horse Carousel, starring Edmund Gwen. Anne Blythe will be your hostess. Join us, won't you? Family Theater is broadcast throughout the world and originates in the Hollywood studios of the world's largest network. This is Mutual, the radio network for all America. Mm -hmm.